Good afternoon. Let's try that again. Good afternoon. <laughs> Much better, thank you. First of all, I want to thank SOCAP, of course, for uh, inviting us to speak here today and for shining the spotlight on Latin America. Uh, my name is Raul Pomares, as you heard, founder of Sony Capital. This is a good friend of mine now, Rodrigo, from uh, New Ventures. For those of you not as familiar with uh, Rodrigo and his work, just to quickly sum it up, uh, you know, he's been, spent the last 15 years on the, you know, from within the region building much of the Latin American impact investment ecosystem, uh, starting with an accelerator that today, you know, supports over 150 entrepreneurs on an annual basis, starting a, uh, the, you know, the green pages, if you would, so a, a listing of green companies, uh, later starting the FLEA, which for those not familiar is effectively the SOCAP of Latin America, which is celebrating its 10th year in February. Um, God, the list just goes on and on and on. What you and the, the uh, started Adobe Capital as a fund, and now Biwala providing new forms of financing. So you know, beyond kind of what you and your team at New Ventures have done, you know, share kind of share with our audience and kind of give a little bit of perspective. You know, what's happening in Latin America? What does the impact investment ecosystem look like? Uh, how big is it? How do people define it from within the region? Hey, thanks, Raúl. Thanks for that intro. And Thanks everybody for, for listening. Um, so we started 15 years ago uh, promoting, there was, the term didn't exist at that time, the impact investing, but we were promoting environmental social companies in, in the region. And it just has been booming lately. I mean, the impact investment ecosystem in Latin America, I think is uh, probably the second biggest one in the, in the worldwide receiving and investing. Um, and it keep, keep, keeps growing. It's interesting how it just, it's not just venture capital or seed stage capital going to social entrepreneurs or impact entrepreneurs. It, it goes everywhere. You see corporates uh, investing, uh, investing in funds, investing in seed capital, uh, just also opening their, their accelerators or their programs. You see government into, uh, getting into, this, into, into the ecosystem. You see a lot of family offices interested in the, in, in the region. So it's, it's, it's booming and it's, I think it's, it's integrating a lot of people. So entrepreneurship is, is growing in the whole region of, of Latin America, but I think it's, uh, impact entrepreneurship is, is growing more than any other industry. I think Latin America is a region that has a lot of local money. Uh, it has a, a, lo a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, innovation, a lot of talented people, a lot of entrepreneurship. And also, the, probably the most important thing is that we have a lot of troubles. <laughs> we have a lot of things to, that, we, that we need to fix. There's a lot of, uh, but, but we always think in Latin America that all these problems, all, all these troubles we have, we have to change the whole, the, the whole system and think about those as opportunities. And I think that's what is happening in Latin America. We are figuring out that if we want to find solutions for, for most of the social things or social troubles or problems we're, 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 we're heading, we need to shift our, our, our energy and think that those things are not going to change if we don't find innovative ways to, to work with that. So and I think what, what is happening is that a lot of entrepreneurs are driving that change. They are, they, they are tired of waiting for philanthropy or governments to, to fix those problems. And I think they are using technology, using innovation to, to find solutions for, 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 for those problems. So, and one of the biggest misconceptions you are when people think about investing in Latin America, um, they think it's difficult, they think it's hard, and, and it's not. I mean, you, people figure out when they just catch a flight to any place in Latin America, and you will see that there's a bunch of people, thousands of people that were, that, that they did their MBAs in Ivy Leagues in the United States or in Europe, and they speak the same language, they, they, they do business, and, 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 they, and, and the business community is booming. So it's, it's not that it's hard, it's just complicated. You need to understand it because we are too many countries. We speak the same language, but we are very different countries. And problems are very different in every, every single country, but the opportunities are there, they're booming. And I mean, we keep growing, we keep growing everything we do, the accelerator, the fund, um, and, and, and it's, I will say that Latin America has these big opportunities to, for, for impact, but also have a, bo a booming business community integrated with different asset classes, different governments, and different uh, nonprofit organizations working together to, to, to drive this change. Um, but let me just get back to you, Raul. Like, the first time I came to SOCA probably was 10 or 11 years ago, and Raul was in this 
plenary session. I mean, we were just starting of talking about impact investing, and Raul was talking to a thousand people about uh, how he was driving change in the world and, and allocating all these all these assets. And, and suddenly, after three years ago, we ended up being friends. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but. I think that was because you started to getting interested in Latin America. For some some reason, <laughs> you ended up uh, probably was it tequila or the <laughs> or the parties. But I don't know what happened. But Raúl ended up traveling every month to Mexico and Latin America, and we we become really good friends. Um, I, I wanted to know why. Like why why what happened to you? What happened <laughs> that you started looking to Latin America like as a big opportunity to invest? Oh, well, fair enough. So, so uh, several things actually for me, and, and you actually touched on one of them when you talked about that local money, because you know several years ago, reading you know the Cap Gemini World Wealth Report, boring report for many, many probably, but nonetheless, it's basically a survey of wealthy families from around the world. And there was like one thing that kind of struck me that was very interesting on this page where they had asked the question, "What's the probability of increasing your allocation to social impact investments?" Of all the regions in the world, Latin America scored the highest. I thought, oh. Well, that's interesting. The overwhelming majority, that, that's an interesting fact. Two, from a, from a bit professional perspective, I actually started my career. So as much as I hadn't been there doing much, I actually started my career in private banking, working with wealthy families in Latin America when I first, uh, when I first started. You know, so that, that was another thing. So I thought, candidly, maybe a bit arrogant, but nonetheless, I thought, well, wait a second. If this is a thesis, having worked with that community in the past, having the experience in impact investing, I thought I was in a pretty good position to test that thesis. Third, in addition, first-generation Cuban-American, married to a Mexican, who had been spending all this time traveling all over the world, advocating and, uh, and talking about impact investing. At some point, I kind of woke up to myself and said, wait a second, you know, what am I doing for the part of the world that is kind of, I'm most rooted in culturally uh, from a, uh, from a, and identify with? You know, why am I not spending more time there? And as you know, I finally did take you up on your offer, and I did come down, and I went to the conferences, and yes, the parties were great, but candidly, what really blew me away, what impressed me the most, was not, you know, not just the, the, the scale, the quantity, the, the quality from entrepreneurs, uh, different types of asset owners, just the level of engagement that I saw throughout the community uh, really drove me to say, you know what, there, there, there is a, a huge there there, and something that candidly, uh, this is, a great this is a great opportunity uh, for me in terms of what I want to accomplish, but I think for all of us as an ecosystem and environment. So yeah, it's time to start spending some more time down there and uh, you know, with you and others, of course, now have built these great, uh, great partnerships. So taking what you said, that's what happened. Now, at the same time, we know the region and you already touched on a few of these kind of myths and misconceptions. Like any, you know, the region does have a lot of myths and misconceptions. And I think, you know, it would be interesting just to kind of hear from you kind of what are some of the key ones that you think of? I know you touched on one in terms of the, the level of diversity that exists in the region. Uh, but talk about a, a few other kind of key myths or misconceptions that many in the audience may have when it comes to Latin America. Well, yeah, as, as I mentioned before, one is... Uh it's, it's, people think that it's really difficult to, to do business in Latin America, and, and, and it is if you don't have the right connections or, or, the, or the right path to start. But, but it's, if you want to do it, it's easy. I mean, the, it's, it's a very well integrated community, as I mentioned. Uh, but again, it's, it's a lot of countries. Some are very small, some are very big markets. Like if you put together Brazil and Mexico, Mexico is the 13th economy of the world, and Brazil might be the ninth economy of the world. So, so they're, they're, they're both big economies, and, and Brazil by itself could be a continent. So uh, it's, it's, it's complicated in that sense, but on the other hand, there's a lot of willingness of people to do business. There's a lot of innovation. There's a, lo a lot of excitement about impact investing. Uh, usually we have a lot of philanthropy that, that used to be very traditional. They're shifting to move towards impact investing. Uh, there are also a lot of facilities as well. So in, in many countries, uh, it's, it's, it's just very easy to get into because there's no, not a lot of barriers and there's not a lot of competition. Uh, the, 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 other, the other thing that's it's really interesting is that family offices are starting to invest a lot of money. So we, with our first fund, with Adobe Capital Fund, uh, the first fund we just had like a couple of investors from, from the region and now probably half of our investors are from the region. So we're seeing that every time it's much more excitement uh, and, and, and 
some other things like uh, violence. It happens, it does. We, 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 there's a lot of violence, there, we have a lot of countries, and probably right now, some, a little bit more, you see what's going on in Chile, what's going on in Ecuador. Yeah, we have those problems, but it's Latin America, we have those, all the, all the history. And that's not going to change, probably. Well, and as we it, all know, it's it, not just happening in Latin America it's, today. It's, it's, you can see it happening <laughs> in Spain, you can hear it in the UK. I mean, there's stuff happening uh, no, not just in, in, in the global south and places like Latin America. It is. It is it's happening, but that's what we are there for. I mean, that's what we're fighting for. That's where we want to create these businesses that reduce inequality. And that's what is going to reduce the violence. I mean, that violence is not just because we're Latin America. It's, they, they come because there's a lot of inequality. And if we don't fight, if we don't create different sources to how do we approach education in a more innovative way, uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Eh? But, but the, 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 I think the, the biggest asset of Latin America is that we already understood that. We know that, the, that our governments are not going to solve those problems. We know that, that uh, philanthropy is not going to solve those problems. We have to do it through innovation. And I think there's a lot of excitement. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of technology in Latin America. It's not that we have those innovation labs that we're going to create the new technologies in the world, but, but there's a lot of innovation about how to, f how to define new business models to solve like health problems, education problems, housing. We see lots of entrepreneurs just finding approaches to solve those issues. And that's what is really exciting about what is booming impact investing in across Latin America. Yeah, and I would just add on, on that same tone, I think a couple myths that I see often, and one that I think we've all experienced across the globe is this concept you often hear, oh, there's no deal flow, there's no deal flow, there's no deal flow. And I think unfortunately in a place like Latin America, that's been, that, that perception has been highlighted uh, by you know, some of the industry's own, uh, own activities. You know, take, for example, with no will, ill will whatsoever to our friends at the Gin and Cambridge Associates, but many of you might recall uh, back in uh, some years ago they published this impact venture capital uh, PE and VC benchmarks and put out you know they put out the the charts and the numbers and I think one of the things that struck me was right away when you look at that chart it was completely dominated by funds in uh, Africa uh, the US in Asia and you know there's this tiny little sliver that was kind of Latin America and so I picked up the phone and called over there and said hey guys you know I'm looking at this report this analysis I see you split out all these things can you give me a little more color on, on Latin America, and you know what the you know what, and the, what the response was? Well, you know it's not statistically relevant because we only had we only had six contributions to the constituent universe. What, what six? And you know, in our pro and, and, and then spending that time down there and getting to see, you know, we've identified you know six funds that contributed to that universe. We've identified you know well over a hundred funds in the ecosystem that are operating. And yes, it's an immature marketplace where you know forty eight percent or so of those funds may be first time funds but it's 48%, so guess what? That means the other half, at a minimum, maybe on our second, third, or maybe even fourth fund, so they must have at least done something right. And so I think the, the, what the failure is, is getting those stories out. Why, why weren't those other 40 or 50 funds that likely were already on a fund too, aware of and connected to this, eco, this, this global ecosystem so that they too would be reported. So I think that's one of the major misconceptions. Like I said, I think as an industry, we're doing a good job knocking that down globally, but we've got plenty of work to do in Latin America. And I think another thing that you said is, is really important about Latin America, because I've literally heard these words. You know, Rodrigo mentioned multiple times the inequality that's driving the needs and some of these opportunity. I can't tell you though how many times in talking with Impact investors, maybe some of you in this room, who are allocating capital to the global south, but when you know, pressed on the question, are you, what are you doing in Latin America, you know what the response is? It's too developed. Really? It's too developed. And, and yes, we talked also about uh, you know, that there's this local capital and this local money, which, which is there, but you also have to look at that, you know, if you, when, you, when you look at the, the Gini coefficient, which is basically th this measure of inequality, Latin America is one of the most in, in, unequal parts of this, uh, 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 you know, scores, unfortunately, the worst in, in terms of inequality. And so there is, which is kind of inherent in what impact investment is really a, an incredibly powerful tool to solve. So, you know, there is, there is deal flow there, as you said repeatedly, there, there is need. An opportunity and what we just really need to do is, as like I said, as SOCAP is doing with, with this event, shine the spotlight. Let's get this community, let's get this region kind of plugged in uh, to the, into this global community, uh, which I think for the first time now is kind of starts to seem to be kind of happening. Kind of coming up near as we start to wrap up this conversation, Rodrigo, why don't you just, you know, some closing thoughts. How, how would you want to kind of finalize, you know, leave this audience uh, understanding 
what, you know, what either from a risk perspective or really opportunity perspective you see for the regions that they should be considering? I, will, I always say that Latin America, in our perspective, is the best place to do impact investing. I mean, if we have this, this kind of bipolarity, you know, like we have a lot of troubles. Uh, uh, very diverse countries, very, uh, very poor populations. Sometimes, just the case of Mexico, I think we have at least 50 million people under poverty lanes. I mean, th that's, that's a lot of poverty. And, and some other countries like Nicaragua that are very less, much less developed than others. So, so there's, there's a lot of needs, but on, on the other hand, there's a lot of like highly educated, well-trained, innovative entrepreneurship. There's a community. Uh, we see that that is thriving. You ever, when, when we started New Ventures 15 years ago, I remember reading like the Fortune magazine or the, the business magazines, there was just talking about big corporates. Now when you open those magazines, they're talking about social entrepreneurship all the time. I see most of the innovation is, is going to, to solve this, this, this trouble. So, so you have these uh, this big opportunities and, and on the other hand you have like this, this industry that actually works. The, 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 there's, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's hard, but there's infrastructure. There are lawyers, there are accelerators, there are, the, it works. I mean, there's a lot of funds that are booming. You have government supporting this growth. So um, you have these two sides that, that, that define an, an impact investing industry. Uh, something you, we need to be aware is that I always say that impact investing is different in, 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 in different countries. I think, uh, I think how people define impact, I, I, I see that every country has their issues that are more relevant to, the, 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 to another. Like for example, uh, gender inequality. I, I see probably some, in some developed countries is much more important, but in some other countries is more access to, to no hunger, like you just try to get to more basic things. So I, th I think Latin America, there are very, very, uh, a lot of things that you, you have to solve. And in different countries, it's, 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 you, you need to understand the local needs. Um, we, st uh, we, we run the fleet, this Latin American conference is, is growing very fast. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of interest from all the sectors. Um, and I invite all of you to, to visit Latin America, to do business in Latin America, to invest in Latin America. There's a lot of people here. We have a Latin lounge for the first time in SoCap, which I really appreciate to intentional media and all the organizers of SOCAP to, to put attention in, in Latin America because we really need it. We need to, and, and, and we believe also that we can also just not just import innovation, I think we believe that we're building new things and probably new ways to solve impact issues that can, and we're sure that they're gonna come from Latin America. We're doing really exciting things and I'm sure we're gonna see Latin, more Latin American entrepreneurs in the scene in the future, in the future years. So I would just add in closing, look, as we, as we talk, I don't want to sound very Pollyannish here, but in terms of, we clearly understand that, you know, there are risks, right? There, there, there are risks, uh, there, there, there are all these there are issues, but these risks are inherent everywhere else. So as I, I would just say the challenge, you know, if you're an impact investor and you're committed to in support, do, investing already and you have the risk appetite as it is to invest in the global south, you know, uh, make sure you get kind of Latin America uh, on your radar. Uh, not only uh, because if you if you're prepared to understand how to assess, evaluate, and mitigate those risks wherever possible, it does represent uh, this highly compelling uh, opportunity. And you know, said 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 simply, you know, when you're going when you know when it comes time to those diligence trips and you got to think about that, I'll just tell you this: you know, the water's warm, the food is great, <laughs> the music will get you out of your seat. And we can all do what we like, which is, you know, doing well by doing good. And actually, Latin America lets you also have a lot of fun while you're at it. So, and you're going to get the, the best returns, financial exactly. returns. There you go. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much. And we look forward to uh, being with you over the course of SoCal. Thank you very much.